All right, today we're gonna to be talking about special considerations in x-ray imaging for your ART exam preparation. In the ART content specification, there's this special categories and a few of the topics that we're gonna talk about today include mobile units, fluoroscopy, and guidelines for using these mobile units. If you haven't had a chance to actually work at the hospital yet, you might not have seen these mobile units, but they're actually only like four feet higher and you can push these mobile units around. Sometimes they get used kind of like a glorified, you know, door stop in certain hospitals. You'll see them around lots of places, but they are very useful and they can really help when it's hard for the patient to be moved into an x-ray room or into a CT scanner. Certain types of examples of this are in the neonatal intensive care unit or in the intensive care unit or other areas within the hospital. This is actually a picture of my oldest son right after he was born. He was born a month early and he was in the NICU for the period of that full month and was released basically on the day he should have been born. And he did have to have an x-ray relatively early on and they did bring in the mobile unit I got to see one of these in person. They had a little bit of a concern. They were able to eliminate that concern by doing the x-ray. I was really glad that we, there was the ability to have these mobile x-ray systems. They typically will have a little bit lower image quality on the mobile x-ray systems because they typically won't be the highest quality imagers. For instance, in x-ray, typically, the systems that they're going to use for the neuro interventions are going to be the highest quality where you need the highest spatial resolution from an interventional setting. The mobile x-ray systems for the purpose of the exams that they're doing usually will perform very well. Next up in this special categories is some features of fluoroscopy systems. Protective drapes in fluoroscopy systems actually are typically on the side of the table and they'll drape down. Sometimes they can even drape down higher. Typically on these systems, the x-ray tube will be underneath the table. These drapes will be actually helping to shield potential stray radiation that could be coming out from the x-ray tube. And that would be shielding towards the lower half of the person that's standing right adjacent to the x-ray tube. Again, on modern tubes, these Leakages are relatively low, and the primary area that we're usually concerned with is actually scatter from the patient. It is also possible to have some drapes potentially that can block parts of the scatter from the patient, but you do need to have an ability typically to enter in order to work during the intervention. Next up is the Bucky slot cover. The Bucky actually contains your image receptor. And it's that physical rectangular piece that you're going to take out and you're going to put back in. And there's actually a cover that goes over that Bucky. So you know you have your Bucky positioned well during your x-ray imaging. Next up is the cumulative timer. When we talk about dose, we're talking about the simplest way to actually keep track of the amount of time and potentially the amount of radiation dose that the patient has received is a cumulative timer. In fluoroscopy, it's a timer of how long have the x-rays been on. A lot of times if the procedure has been going on for a while, you know you've been standing there for an hour, but how long have the x-rays actually been on? The amount of time that the x-rays are on is going to correlate with the dose that the patient has received. That is the simplest means of keeping track of reporting dose and there's gonna be alarms that are gonna go off after certain intervals, such that the users are cognizant of the time within the interventional procedure. Next up, called remote controlled fluoroscopy, is possible on modern systems, wherein there's typically an operator room and you're actually performing a fluoroscopy procedure from the other side of the leaded glass such that as a staff, you're receiving less radiation dose during that fluoroscopy procedure. Next up, from the NCRP, 
102-21 CFR from the FDA for fluoroscopy in mobile units. These are some considerations we have. The air kerma or the radiation that you're going to measure in air directly beyond what's called a primary shield. This means a leaded wall, for instance. That primary shield is essentially 3 times 10 to the minus 3 percent. If you're looking at the fraction of the radiation which is allowable to make it through the lead, it's 3 times 10 to the minus 5th of the air karma. At a high level, the leaded wall should be stopping the vast, vast majority of the radiation, and it's 3 times 10 to the minus 3 percent of radiation, which you're allowed to measure on the other side of the leaded wall. The systems should be able to indicate when the image receptor is perpendicular to the ISO ray from the X-ray tube, and you also should be able to change the field of view. The tube should be activated, and when it's activated, it uses what's called a dead man switch. You have to actually be physically applying pressure to a switch, and it's called a dead man switch because if the person died while they were doing the acquisition, it's kind of a grim thing. If the person died while they were doing the acquisition, they would let go of the switch and the x-ray would turn off. That's why it's called a dead man switch, namely pressure needs to be continuously applied for x-rays to be on during a typical radiograph. The air karma rates will be dependent upon when the actual x-ray system was produced and the source and the source to skin distance for your x-ray is also going to be dependent on the type of x-ray procedure which you're undergoing. For fluoroscopy, we're typically talking in a normal dose rate, the rate of radiation dose. Normally, standard dose, would we'd like to have it less than 0.1 gray per minute, and a high dose rate procedure would be less than 0.2 gray per minute. And the mobile systems that we talked about earlier, they're typically going to work at a lower radiation dose rate because of the surrounding environment. 0.05 gray per minute would be your dose rate there.